Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Morning, 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 morning. It's another bright and beautiful, well, sunny, rainy day. Yes. I'll buy you as well. <laughs> Wonderful. So it's now 10, 11 a.m. Atlantic Standard Time, and I am Simon Claxton, president and founder of the Sophia Miriam Foundation, nonprofit organization based in Trinidad and Tobago. And we are here yet again for another episode of Dream Big Girls Empowerment Program. So this will be our last of eight consecutive Saturdays. However, I'll still be seeing you ladies once per month, every second Saturday, okay? So July, we're going to do July the 10th, and then afterwards, August, September, October, November, and December. Mm -hmm. So just wanna thank each and every one of you for logging in on time and for being here today. So we're going to have a small closing off session for the first phase, which is the uh, eight consecutive Saturdays. And we're going to be moving over into the mentorship phase of the program. Uh, we want to say a special thanks to all our sponsors who have supported us during this uh, program so far. Uh, special thanks to JMMB, JMMB Group and to Unitrust Corporation for their contribution and also to AMCO who have contributed um, personal hygiene products for you ladies. Uh, we want to say thanks to all our partners uh, from all over the region who have collaborated and given up their time and everything, you know, to make this program a uh, success. Really, really, we have a great team on board and I just want to thank all uh, my team members. And I want to thank Mr. Mitchell for his, um, you know, commitment and for all his hard work over the past uh, couple of months in putting everything on the YouTube and producing all the you know, branding, et cetera, for this um, program. Okay, so we are privileged now to moving straight into the program. So you guys are gonna get an opportunity. We have the National Pride Project. So each country will be presenting their project, just talking about, you know, something about your country, okay? And we have a couple of speakers as well. We have a gentleman named Mr. Nigel Blundell, and we also have Kareem Daniel Rice who will be gracing us with their presence today. However, we have greetings from the marketing manager of JMMB Bank, and that is Ms. Carol Whitehorn Moran, and she's uh, joining us. She's on the go, but she's gonna be logging in. Um, she's already in, I believe, and she's gonna give us a few uh, words of greetings. Okay, and then we'll move on. Um, Ms. Moran? Hello, hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Simone, and good morning to all of the participants of the Dream Big Girls Empowered program. I'm so sorry that I can't join you guys by video. I actually had to pull aside a little bit. I'm on the road this morning, but I could not let the opportunity pass me by without saying a special good morning and a special greeting from the JMMB group. I know that Simone has and her team has been working hard these last couple of weeks, and I just want to commend each and every one of you for participating in this program. These days we're living in very different times, right? Very turbulent times. Um, we would not have expected a pandemic to have hit us. We would not have expected some of the economic fallout of the pandemic that, that we have been experiencing, some of the social impact that we have been experiencing. So programs like this that instill you guys with the resources and the information that you need to face some of the challenges that we face is so important. And I know that Simone has been working with a team very hard over the last couple of years. GMMB is very proud to have been part of that journey. And we look forward to continuing to work with Simone and to work with you young ladies. You guys would have had the opportunity to have heard from Heather last week. Was last week, yes, Simone? Uh, two, um, weeks. two weeks ago. Um, Heather as the, as the branch manager of our Port of Spain branch, and she would have given you some financial information, financial education that I really do hope that you young women take to heart and, and, and you know, take that information and use it, open up a savings account, start saving early. And the reason I am reiterating this is because it's important to, to be able to start at a very early age to start these practices. You don't want to end up to be an older person and still struggling, you know, and this is the foundation in terms of having financial success 
open up a savings account and start saving. There's so many people today having experienced the pandemic, wish they had started early, wish they had a savings account, wish they had, you know, uh, um, uh, an emergency fund started for times such as these. So take lessons from what is happening in the environment around you and really take stock of what you want to do with your lives and ensure that everything that you do, you do it with confidence and you do it positivity. So again, thank you, Simone, for allowing me the opportunity to just say hello. I wish you guys um, a great weekend. I'm hoping that this is a great closing for you guys today. And I look forward to working with Simone and team very, very soon. So Simone, I'm sure I'll be hearing from you very soon. Yes, Carol, thanks very much. It's wonderful to have you on board with us and the GMMB group. Thank you for your greetings. No problem. Have a good day, ladies and gentlemen. You too. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Right, so as I mentioned, the National Pride Project, so we'll get to that shortly. So ladies, please ensure that you um, have your projects uh, ready in order to present. Okay, so all right, Savannah, you're here, right? So just ensure you have your uh, project at hand. Yes, I'm here. Okay, great, nice. So we're gonna be moving into um, very important um, conversation. It's going to be a recap of uh, basically a lot of the topics that we've um, gone through. We have a very special gentleman with us today, uh, Mr. Nigel Blundell, who we can see on the screen. And he's going to be doing a recap of um, some of the topics, right? So he's going to be talking just for about the next 20, 25 minutes. Um, he is actually the director of Advice Consultancy Services, uh, which specializes in um, alternative um, healthcare, like Chinese medicine, and he is also a director at Ronin Security Services Limited that specializes in elite training um, for government officers in the sense of security, uh, providing um, protection services, right? So um, he's going to be giving us a bit of information on holistic health, how to take care of ourselves, um, our mind, our body, and just uh, recapping on you know, various topics that we've um, we've spoken about over the past few months. So he's going to tell us a bit about himself, right? And um, the type of work that he does. So Mr. Nigel Blondell, the floor is yours. All right, good day, Simone. Um, thank you for inviting me uh, to your group. Um, good day, ladies. Uh, I should say royalties. Um, a little bit, a little background of myself. I'm a certified therapist in the area of alternative medicine, Chinese medicine. I'm also certified as a hypnosis specialist um, counseling. As Simone indicated, I'm also a director of a, it's a paramilitary company that is designed for training for government officers. And, right? A little bit of my background, I served in the military for a very long while. And um, in addition to that, I there was always an interest in understanding people and hence I got into hypnosis and I also got into um, various types of martial arts that have a high psychological uh, training you know component in terms of understanding people I've always been interested in in understanding people and understanding life and understanding this thing called energy which we don't know much about so Basically, I am I am here at your disposal today to give you share some knowledge, you know, survival for life. And I pray you all of God's success in all of your endeavors today. All right. So, so that, that that's that's it in a, in a nutshell. Some of the things are classified, so we'll keep it quiet. All right. All right. So some, some of the precautions. things. Some of the things you're going to hear today is going to blow your mind. All right. We live in a world and sometimes the world could be quite strange, a strange place. Let me talk about, let me talk about, since the name of the group is Dream Big, right? Let me give you a story. There was a guy who climbed a mountain. He was a rock climber and he did well and when he came down the mountain, he had no vehicle. So he had to go to the next town. 
So he just, when he realized that um, no car is coming in his direction, subconsciously, and highlight the word subconsciously, in his mind, he saw a car, uh, a very beautiful woman, blonde hair, picking him up and dropping in, him into the next town. So he waited a while and then all of a sudden, a car came, blonde hair woman, very beautiful. She picked him up and he, she dropped him into the next town. He said, wait a second. Anyhow, he didn't really pay much mind, but on a, on a subconscious level, he realized that something really interesting took place. Then he went rock climbing again and same scenario, he needed transport. So then he pictured a blonde woman, blue eyes, and a Cadillac. And lo and behold, blonde woman, Cadillac, picked him up and dropped him to the next town. He said, wait a sec, I think I have found a secret here. By the way, he's, he's, uh, he, he wrote a book called Word Language. We'll get to that just now. And then guess what? He went rock climbing again. Same scenario. This time he pictured in his mind, he pictured and highlighted the word picture in his mind, a different woman. So the woman came, the car came, she picked him up. Strange woman this time. Eh? And guess what? He spent the night by her. And he went to the town, the, the town that he wanted to go the other day, um, which he had planned to the following day. So he decided, he said, wait a second, I have found a secret. So he went by his friend and told the friend the whole scenario. He said, boy, I just discovered a way that I could think something and materialize what it is I'm thinking. So he tried the same exper experiment by his friend, only to realize that it didn't work. So he wanted to find out why it didn't work. Then he realized that to go up the mountain and come down and wait in a car required passion. Not only that too, so passion one and two, he envisioned in his mind and he held the vision of the woman coming to pick him up. So the secret was whatever it is that you are dreaming, you have to hold it in your mind and see it in 3D, not 2D. If you're watching a movie, you are in 2D, two dimension. If you, if, if you decide to watch a movie in 3D, when you put on the, the goggles, it's like, oh my God, like Jurassic Park or one of those movies. Oh my Lord, I'm inside the movie. Wow, there's a bullet here. Oh, a sword here. And I, you know, you're actually in it. You have to view your life like that. You're first, you have to know what it is you want in life. And the second, you have to envision what it is you want, right? Envision what it is you want as though it has already happened. You got that? You got to put yourself in it as though it's finished and hold your mind to it. That's it. And thirdly, have passion. And four, don't doubt. Remember I told you that he wrote a book called Word Language? So what it is he found out is that the world of don'ts don't exist. How could he tell somebody, don't, hey, don't run up, don't go over there. Don't go on that branch. Listen to the words that I'm speaking. What don't does, it cancels the positivity that you have in your mind. Whatever it is that you want in life, or whatever it is that you're thinking, dreaming, hoping for, the don't and the nuts will destroy it. If you tell a child, don't run over there, how could you tell a child, don't run over there? Because the, 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 the mere fact that you say it, there's something that compels the child internally to do it, to go against the instruction. So what do you need to do is to start to attack your vocabulary and take out the, the, the don'ts, the negativity inside of it and start speaking to yourself differently. So see yourself, see your dream as though it has already been done and hold it right there and leave it and it will materialize. I'm gonna talk about, um, there was a, there's a very famous pop star and um, I could tell you about her past and it's gonna blow your mind when I tell you what it is. She sat down in a class. She always wanted to become a, a, a pop star. And she knew what she wanted, but she didn't have the keys to move from where she was to where she wants to be. So she needed that. So there was a gap. 
And she always had this big dream, I want to be a pop artist. But guess what? She sat down in a Jewish class that was showing people how to use various names of God, right, to affect your present condition. And she was interviewed, and they asked her, well, how did you move from A to B or A to Z? And she said, a certain doctor taught me Jewish Kabbalah. Can anybody tell me who, who that pop star is? Anybody want to make a guess? What did you say? I didn't understand you. Can anybody tell me the name of the pop star that I'm speaking about? Oh. All right. Nobody knows. I, Rihanna. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I actually yeah. woke up and I didn't say that. Rihanna, she always wanted to be a pop star. And guess what? She is now. Because she was not that old um, all the time. She had an idea. She would think big. And when she used the names that was taught to her, she found out that, wait a second, I could create my future. I could make my dream a reality. My dream have to, have to move from the point of just being a dream into reality. So she, 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 she used that particular platform, right? Which gave her the key to unlock her greatness. She held the concept in her mind of what it is she wants to do. Everybody understood that? Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. yes sir. Nice, nice. So dreaming big and thinking big is one. That is great. It's fantastic. But you have to see it in 3D. Write that down and, and ponder upon it. See it in 3D. See it done. If you want a house, right? Picture yourself in a big house, land, right? Four bedrooms, jacuzzi, swimming pool, a salt, a, a salt water swimming pool in the house. <laughs> okay? Um, driving what? Range Rover, Audi, Benz, you name it. See it. See it and see you inside the vehicle. See yourself inside the house. See, see yourself in the yard. And then hold it in your mind and leave it right there. All right? And do not entertain doubt. Whenever doubt wants to come in your mind, no, 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 shut up. Tell the ego to shut up because you're going to hear voices in your head talking to you. Right? Hold it in 3D. Try it and get in contact with Simon and let me know. Yes, right. Nigel. Thanks yeah. very much for those wonderful, wonderful words. Um, we did gender-based violence, and we noticed that, you know, keeping safe is um, so important. So if you just give the girls just two, probably two tips on how they could protect themselves and keep safe. All right. So let's, let's deal with, with um, gender-based violence and abuse and criminal activity. There is something inside of all of us that tells us if something is wrong. In my dealing with individuals from all over the world, they will tell you that the boy is a nice boy and the, boy, the, the girl is a nice girl. But I always knew that there was something about him that wasn't right. I always knew some, there's something about her that is not right. And you realize that some people marry, some people get together and hope that somewhere along the line, things are going to change. We need to realize that because something took place in their past, which they never dealt with properly, surfaced in a relationship. There are some women and men who have been abused by their fathers sexually or raped by their boyfriend or some uncle or something. And they keep that thing quiet in the family. And these people try to go and have a relationship. 
So you have a pent up anger, you have a psychological wiring to attract other hurting individual, individuals or abusive individuals, just like your father or your boyfriend or somebody or some family member. And you realize that you're in a tailspin and you can't seem to get your, your, yourself out of that, that control. So there's something that I do, right? If I ask you, so I'm gonna show you how to break the program. So first, you have to realize that there's something inside of you to know when trouble is coming. <laughs> you ever, somebody ever ask you for money, right? No, pay attention now, eh? Somebody asks, hey, um, give me a hundred dollars. Uh, um, no, Montana, I'll give it back to you in two weeks time or whatever. And in your gut, you know that something is wrong. <laughs> They're asking you for the $50. Hey, don't worry, it's have 100 And you're, you're troubled, eh? Inside you, you'd have something like, I ain't feel sure pay me back, you know? I ain't feel you'll pay me back. But you know what? He's my friend, he's my family, whoever it is, you know, so I'll give it to them. Uh, so you decide to take out $100 out of your purse and pay the person. Give it to the person. We need to realize that when you give it to them, you know within yourself you're not going to get it back. <laughs> there's something inside of you. If you're in a relationship, in fact, there was a good friend of mine from the States. She was living with her boyfriend. She had a kid with her boyfriend. And she said, Nigel, I just got up. They were living together in an apartment and run to the, the, the washroom and start to vomit. I said, why did you do that? She said, I felt in my gut that something wrong was gonna take place or he was gonna do something to me. So, 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 so that he tried to kill her, he tried to kill her. And she escaped out of the apartment. And I think she tried to stab her or something like that, but she sensed it in her gut. What I want you to do is to start to pay attention to the alarm signals inside of you. If you're walking down the road, there's something called an awareness, right? Just remain calm. Look down the road or around you and look inside yourself and see if there's an alarm going off or if there's a peace or if there's a, there's a funny feeling of something is not right here. You might, you might be able to put your hand in it. Some people have trained this particular sense and can actually tell you what is gonna take place. Inside of all of us, we have it. You don't, you don't have to go through no training or whatever. What I'm saying, listen to your senses. Let good sense prevail. Don't go in certain places where you can be a target, especially in the nighttime or lonely abandoned areas, right? If something, if you realize that something is going to happen, right? What do you have to do? And I suggest that if it becomes physical, for a man, if a man attacks you, go for the eyes and go for the groin. Explore the weakness of your opponent. Two fingers to the eyes, that's it. Then you call the police. Call your family members if something happened. If you realize that somebody is about to take advantage of you. The main thing is to get over the fear. There's a particular thing that we use in our training to help people get over fear. In my training, I, I would pull a gun on you and something is gonna happen. So think about me pulling a gun on you. And the first thing is gonna happen is that you're gonna be scared. Your breathing will change. So I'm gonna show you something. Before something hits you, whether it be physical or if you want to say spiritual or whatever, if you believe in it or not, your breathing pattern changes. You mark this down, you know, mark it and just go, go think about it. Doing it today, today, your breathing pattern will change. If somebody's about to harm you, rape you, kill you, kidnap you, something, your breathing pattern will change. The person's mentally thinking upon you, that's a good target. So today, I'm gonna do that person some hurt or rub them or take advantage. Your breathing pattern will change. What you have to do is to learn to breathe. So there's a breathing exercise where we learn, where we teach you where to breathe from your stomach and not your chest. 
When somebody is afraid, they begin to breathe in their chest. And what happens is that the chest does not have the enough capacity for air. So what would happen? The person will begin to hyperventilate, they start to shake and tremble. You know, sometimes when somebody's scared, we see them trembling and we laugh at them. Look at them, you're scared, you're scared. That's because they're breathing in the chest and not their abdomen. If you learn to breathe from your abdomen, you will conquer a lot of your emotional issues. The emotional, the emotional scenarios that take place in your life or that has taken place in your life, if you learn to breathe from your abdomen, you will take charge of your emotional issues. So learn to breathe from your abdomen. So what I'm saying is that, come back to what I'm saying. You are in a scenario, so we've we gone into self-defense and breathing now, right? And what the Russians do, they learn, they, they, they learn to breathe from, from the abdomen. And if you realize that you're in a certain position, right, to protect yourself, a life and death situation, where it's gonna turn serious, you go for the eyes and you go for the groin. Broke all your fingers. I, I showed you two fingers just now, just open your hands like this, and if you have nails better, go straight to the eyes and run, run like hell, <laughs> right? Run or kick them in the groin and run. Sometimes they come in, in pairs, just go for the eyes, do it fast. Eyes, you're going straight for the eyes and then run, take off. Make sure that if you, what you could do, you could have like a um, phone numbers, em emergency numbers, police, right? You could have family members, somebody that you could call in a, in, in, a, in a spur of the moment, right? If something goes wrong, right? And you go and report the matter to the police officer. Let them know that somebody tried to attack you and you defended yourself. Make sure you go to the station and report it because what could happen if the person you attack could go to the station and say, this woman attacked me or this girl attacked me. And next thing you know, whoa, 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 police coming for you. Yeah, so go and make the report. Tell parents, family, whoever it is, go to the station and make the report, right? If you can't get to the eyes and hold it down, yeah, hit them in the groin, hit them in the nuts. Kick them, you understand? And kick them hard, very hard. And run like hell, right? The main thing is that you must survive this. You do not want to be on the, on the, on the, on the papers in your country, on the news day, the newspapers in your country, or on television, or this person was attacked. No, 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 don't, don't waste that, right? So, so there's a level of sensitivity. Just be, just calm yourself and learn to breathe from your abdomen. One of the ways that you could try and master this, lie down on your back, put your legs up, elevate your legs on a chair and put a book on your stomach and allow your stomach, when you inhale, to raise the book, right? It will expand and then deflate when you breathe out. So when you inhale, your stomach should swell. And when you breathe out, it will go down. Simple exercise. That's learn to start, learn to breathe from your abdomen. Babies do it naturally. And as they get older, they learn how to breathe in, in their chest, which is bad. So become an abdominal breather. So we're gonna keep it very simple, right? Any questions so far, based upon what it is you all have heard? No, everything is good. Everything is good, good. Yeah, I understand. You understand, nice. Anybody else, let me get some feedback. We have Commissioner Cole on the line here with us. She's been present every week supporting. Go ahead, Commissioner uh -huh. Cole. Go ahead, we're not hearing you. I think your mic is not muted, so we're not hearing you. Still not hearing. Um, must be some technical difficulties. Okay, so in the meantime, is there anyone else? Any other girls want to um, ask any questions? What do you think about this information? I think it's very, very important, very
valuable information to help keep you safe, use your intuition, be more in tune with yourself, be more aware, and also physical things that you can use to protect yourself. Okay, and holding on to your dreams and your visions with passion, no doubt, and using the right language. I don't think it could be better said. Yes, Shan, go ahead. Well, I would like to thank Mr. Nigel for his um, advice because I think his energy is awesome. It's wonderful. His advice is also awesome. And the combination of um, spirituality to value your instinct and gut feeling to protecting yourself, um, self-defense, and I, I think it flows together. I really think he's doing an amazing job at helping us females to become a better version of ourselves. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Nigel, and thank you to all the other um, leaders of the Sapphire Miriam Foundation for doing this to, for us girls and bringing all of this, these gems for us. Thank you so much. Can I, can I say something? Yes, sir, you may. To all of you lovely ladies outside there, and I see you as beautiful ladies, and not as play toys. Have a strong self-esteem about yourself. Don't let any man call you a hoe or call you something that is degrading. You have a right, you have a right to demand respect from anybody and have a high respect for yourself. If you're in a relationship or deciding or thinking about getting into a relationship with any man, boy, whoever, do a background check on a person. Do a background check on the parents. If they have some kind of mad thing happening in the, in the family, you need to do your investigation because that is the person you're gonna you link up with in life. So just as see somebody, oh I, oh, I love him, or I love her, not, not good enough, not in this day and age. You have to know somebody's past. Now I'm gonna get into something a little technical. How much time I have? You go ahead, uh, next 10 minutes. All yeah. right. What's, what's the lowest age in this group here? Uh, supposed to be maybe around 13. I don't think we have anybody probably yeah. Okay. All right. So sometimes, and this this is coming from my heart here. And then I'm just going to talk about after this. I'm going to talk about what to what to eat to keep um keep yourself healthy. Sometimes a lot of people are becoming quite sexually active around this age, right? Some of them have diseases in them. When uh, there was a particular medical course that I was exposed to, we had two American doctors. Well, one was from Kenya, but she's in the States, and the other one was um, from the United States, and both of them are apparently working together. Brilliant women in terms of medicine. And what was brought to my attention is 19 million STDs, new STDs that was on the market that a lot of people were unaware of. Well, that blew my mind because I was certainly unaware that these things were, were existent, in our world, existent in our world. And some of them are so dangerous. You just have to lie down on the person. You don't even have to engage in activities with the person. What it is I'm saying in all of this, find out the person's sexual history. You have to get involved with somebody. Find out a lot of things about them. Let them go and do their tests. I love you, you want to move in, move with the person, right? And you see, you cannot, you cannot tell certain teenagers, no, don't do it, or it doesn't exist, or put your head in the sand and forget about it. Don't worry, don't change. No, nothing's going to change. A lot of people are getting involved in, into all types of different things. Let me explain something since I'm on this stuff, right? Let's talk about yeast infection. In the 1800s, antibiotics in the hospital, the antibiotics in the hospital was colloidal silver, all right? 
It then had a, what you call antibiotics. What happened is that people who were sick in the hospital started getting better when, when colloidal silver was introduced. And what happened, um, the doctors were no longer um, working and the nurses were no longer working because everybody was getting better. So guess what? They removed the colloidal silver and they put antibiotics. Well, antibiotics, yes, it is good to drop certain bacteria and infections and stuff, but it also creates, it puts yeast in the body. Yeast infection. Now, the, the thing about it, when yeast gets into the body, because there are various causes of it and how it could get into your body, also through individuals, right? There's a nerve in the stomach called the vagus nerve. Inside the gut, it has billions or trillions of bacteria, good bacteria. But when the yeast gets into the gut, the yeast begins to attack these bacteria. And via that nerve called the vagus nerve, which runs from the gut straight to the brain, the yeast is able to control the mind of the person. So now we're getting into something called food and behavior. So sometimes what it is you are involved with could affect your thinking and affect your mind. There are certain foods, when you eat, it will, it will begin to affect your mind. So this is why when you go to the grocery, so we're jumping into this thing here now. When you go into the grocery, your, mind should, your mindset should be, be aware of hydrogenated oil. So start to read ingredients the ingredients list and all the, the products that you have in the grocery. Once you see hydrogenated oil, you need to stay far from that thing. Hydrogenated oil gives you a whole range of diseases. Heart, diabetes, stroke, blood clots, and the list goes on. Right? And so, so be very careful what it is you buy and put inside your body. Be very careful who you allow into your space. Toxic relationships. Certain people have you get you unhappy. You need to run from the, run from those individuals. Once they are unhappy, sour, sour individuals, run away. Keep your peace, keep your sanity, keep your happiness. Relationship going sour, run or get counseling. Don't be bogged down. You are beautiful and stay beautiful. You are blessed and not cursed. And see yourself, right? as royal material. Do not allow anything or anybody to cry you down or to try and dump you down. Keep your head level on your shoulder, right? And be modest as women, as young women. Take back that which belongs to you rightfully. And do not allow this world to dump nonsense in. Right, so I just decided to bring that in because I felt the need to because we, we live in a world with all type of beliefs and systems. So I just decided to bring that home. And like I said, do your homework on the person. Find out about them technically before saying, yeah, yeah, yeah let's go into this deep relationship. Find out about them. Find out about their parents. If their parents have died, find out. If, they came, uh, if somebody raised them up, find out about the individual. Right? Find out about the personality, if that personality will mesh good with yours. Find out where, the, where is the man going? What's your vision? <laughs> the young boy, whoever, right? What's your vision for me? Where are you heading in life? What's your purpose coming into my space? What it is you're looking for? Are you just looking for sex or something? So you're just looking to have a good time. And so I am some donkey for you to ride. So. Yes, be very straightforward. Since you do not have a vision for my life and even for your life, then there's no need for me to be in your space or for you to be in my space. Because I want something in life. I want to go somewhere in life. I want to achieve something in life. Right? So probably next time, uh, probably a couple of years from now, I will, I will, I will um, address you all as Dr. So-and-so. All of you Right? See yourself. When I say doctor, you know, you're, whatever it is that you're interested in, if it's IT or engineering or medicine or, or, or law or whatever it is, right? 
that you would have gone to the highest, go get your degrees. Do not allow anybody to hinder you from achieving your goal. Hold your mind and see yourself already graduated. See, see, see the, 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 the certificate on the wall and feel happy within yourself that yes, I have achieved what I have set out to do. And, and don't forget, earn and demand that them, that persons around you give you respect. Take your respect as a woman, as a beautiful young lady. You are not somebody's play toy. You are beautiful. You have royal material. Huh? Yeah, I think I've, I've, I've said enough. <laughs> Thanks so, so much, Nigel. You, I mean, my only regret is that every young woman in the world can't hear this, you know, this information today, I'm telling you, because if each and every one of us as young women take this advice and know how valuable we are and, you know, do as you say, check out, you know, and, and you know, be selective of who you're letting into your space and that energy, you know, we would be much, much better individuals. We'd be safer in, in mind and body and spirit. And don't so, forget to save. Don't give away, don't spend away all your money, right? <laughs> You can get six cans. Uh, cans, um, one is um, long term, one is short term, one is play. <laughs> when I say play, you know you want to do stuff. So you have some play money. And when that money finished, it's finished. Don't go, don't go diving into the other, the other jars or the cans. Learn to train yourself to handle money. Right? Yes. And begin to see. There's a pleasure in saving, you know. You know? So true. Even, even, though, even if it's a dollar a day. <laughs> that will go far. Yes, that will go far. Yeah. For one week and then a month, then two, three, four, five months, then a year. Really right? Learn to save. Yeah. Thanks, Nigel. Right. We have Commissioner Cole. Um, I, let me hope that um, one of our technical difficulties is sorted. Commissioner? Are you hearing me now? Yes, we are. Uh, good morning. I good have morning listened attentively. Uh, yes. And um, there are great salient points that you would have uh, imparted here today. One of the questions that I have for you as you talk about toxic relationships, what, what if the toxic relationship here is within the girl's family? Um, mm -hmm. These young girls within their family circle because um, in my clinical practice of social work, I mm -hmm. would have encountered uh, most of the challenges that children face are within yes. their home. All mm -hmm. the research will show that the most dangerous place for children are within their homes and the people who harm them mostly are those they trust, not the stranger, Very because true. we often teach them never to trust uh, strangers and my second point have to do with the most recent law enacted in trinidad um mm -hmm. i think the attorney general was recently celebrating that he was able to get uh the ability for women this is a to carry the pepper spray and could you talk about uh how to use it because if you don't know to use the pepper spray properly you can actually harm yourself if you're trying to defend yourself against an attacker because um with how the violence have really ramped up against women i would have wished if there was a taser law for women to really use the taser instead of the spray because the taser within seconds can really um immobilize an attacker temporarily to give you enough time to escape i thank you Commissioner, those points are excellent, and you are truthful in what it is you're saying. I have to agree with you. Uh, this time I'm going to be very open now, all right? I live in Trinidad. I'm a Trinidad. Really, the pepper spray? Really? No. The reason why, if, if you were never in a hand-to-hand -hand combat scenario, if you, mm -hmm. if, you know, that sort of stuff, if you... If you never had that type of training, when the situation arises, you're not going to pull no pepper spray to, to defend yourself. Not only that, too, the pepper spray sometimes way down in the bag. To get it, if something happens immediately, 
right? You have some problems. So let me give you a secret. I went, we have anybody from St. Lucia here? Yes. Yes, All we do. Right. Okay. Do you know me? Your face is funny, All right. So I came in your country. All right. We have so, Utalia. She's one of our partners here in St. Lucia. Utalia. All right. So I have to be very, but now I have to be very careful what I'm saying. <laughs> Go ahead. I was asked. <laughs> I was asked to. Why should I? All right. All right. I was asked to. Okay. So there, there were some men that were attacking women in St. Lucia, right? And um, there was a scenario that broke my heart. Uh, Eighty-year-old woman was was raped. And so I was called in very quietly to train a whole set of women for one week, week in St. Lucia. Um, the individuals that were there um, were people from the legal system and St. Lucia's professional women, also attorneys and those from the judiciary. And I taught them how to defend themselves with one week of training. That can work in a scenario when somebody, if somebody wants to do you something, um, you know, very bad, right? There are, there are a lot of people are unaware of this. There are certain pressure points on the body. So I happen to train some judges, right? Won't say much about it. And I showed them if you touch someone in three area, three parts of the body, you'll paralyze the entire body of the person or you just put them to sleep just by hitting three areas. But they must, they must be in a certain form, right? But after a while, once you know where it is, you just hit it and that's it. And there are certain areas you just hit once and that's it. What I'm saying is women need to learn and I'm willing to, I'm willing to make myself available how to protect themselves, right? Yes, the pepper spray, okay. Yeah, all that is good if you know how to use it. Okay, so if you have not, if you don't have any training, I would suggest that you have it very easily accessible. There's some of them look like a lipstick or something like a key holder or something like that. Some of them look like that. If you can have it outside your bag, if you're walking with your bag or something, right? So that if you have to use it, you'll get to it fast. Not down in your bag. Some of them, if they're driving a car, don't put it in the pouch. Put it right on and on, on the 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 the, the the door. So you, you could get to it fast. The whole idea is to get to the thing fast enough so that you can use it. Yes, and I'm in agreement with the taser. <laughs> there are some um, um, touch lights, you know, that when you put the light on, it have a taser attached there. So you could tase somebody, you know, so all of those things that you could have them again, again, hanging on the back like a key, a key ring, and it's easy at your disposal. You have a right to protect yourself. Woman, you have a right to stop any man who wants to invade your privacy. I don't care who they are, you have a right to stop them. And I will show you, I'll give you the secrets. I'll give you the martial arts secrets. When I showed those judges and them what to do, like they were blown. And in fact, I didn't know, and here they say, this is the punchline. I didn't know that I had judges in my class. <laughs> So I said, oh my God, I'm dead. I'm finished. <laughs> because these judges are gonna, gonna fry me. <laughs> but no, they, they, they really enjoyed it. And they said, yes, this is really good for women. So um, um, I, I, I am making myself, so let's, let, let it be official today. I am making myself available to you, all right? Because I care about you and I hate how Oh, the men, we have had a lot of murders in Trinidad, killing the wife, and then hanging the cell. What kind of sick craziness? I, I listen, I, I was raised up, listen, let me tell you something. I was raised up in a family to respect women. Listen, if you women don't respect yourself, right? Other people will continue to take advantage of you, you know. You have a right to put a stop to this nonsense. Okay, so if it's dealing in the home now, so let's go to the home now. If you have certain laws that will protect you, fantastic. We need to find out about those laws and show you what you can do. Or get in touch with some social welfare person 
something like that, where you could talk or something, not even the family member might be appropriate because of what it is going on. But oh God, my Lord, all right, all right, let, me, let me give you something a little bit. Forgive me, woman who y'all probably might know about this, or if this has, or is happening in your home, please forgive me for what it is I'm going to say. There are some fathers, right? It is in the culture, hear me well, to sleep with their daughters, right? They push this thing under the carpet for years. They keep it quiet. They think it is their right to sleep with their daughters. And some of them even get their daughters pregnant. And, and it doesn't make news. Everything is quiet, quiet, quiet. You have a right to stop this thing. Expose it. Let it out. Right? Get in touch. Um, you have a counselor here? Yeah? Fantastic. Thank God for you. Thank God for people like you. You need to talk about it. Some women are being groomed into sexual activity in the home. And some mothers do not speak about it. Or they tell a child, oh, you're talking nonsense. You have a right to demand respect. Repeat after me. I have, a, I have the right. Come on, all of you. I have the right. right. Come on, woman. I, I have, have the right, the right. to I demand respect. Right. To demand to respect. respect. From another man. From another, from another man. Daddy, from another uncle, man. brother. Is that I had a next six scenario that, that came to, to my desk? This guy going after his mother, sleeping with his mother in the nighttime. Come on. What the hell it is going on with our men? Sorry for using those words, but come on, demand respect. Stop it. It's time to stop this thing. It's time to. To turn a whole new page in this thing and say, listen, this thing stops here. Right? I'm gonna get my information, how to go about it, get in touch with the counselor here. We will, we will, we will check the laws of your country and so forth and see how best we can we can help you. Demand respect. Take it. Take it. If they if they and there's a particular um there's a particular counseling strategy that actually is a, it's a great hypnosis tool actually to help you get back your power. If somebody um, has taken something from you, piece of your soul, we call it soul stealing. So something happened to you at an early age, a young age, and probably still happening now, you show you how to get back that piece of the soul that that person has so that you can be whole psychologically, emotionally, mentally, and start a a healthy relationship. Because one of these days you're gonna have children. One of these days you wanna have a family. And you don't wanna have all this set of craziness hanging over your head. And guess what? Hurting people is a track hurting people. Because if you have been wired here, mentally, in abuse, you're gonna to gravitate towards somebody who's gonna abuse you. Okay, I think I've said enough. For I think sure. we're going to come down. Uh, listen, I'm very passionate. I'm a passionate person. I, 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 my apologies if I may come off a bit strong. But I really, I really care for you ladies, and I hope and I pray all God's best and blessings and success upon you in everything that you put your hands to. And from this man here, right, I salute you lovely ladies. I want Thank to let you. you know I respect you. If you came from a home, Thank that, you very that, much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Thank uh, so you I think our, 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 land, our land here today. <laughs> yes, Nadja, thanks so, so much. I, I don't think anybody could have said it better. Thank you so, so much for your wise words. Um, I think Commissioner Cole wants to comment, and then we will move on to, uh, we have Mr. Kareem Daniel Rice after. Uh, thank, thank you for this wonderful, what I would call motivation. And um, you, are an, you are a national asset as well as an international asset. That's because I would have heard you doing trainings across the region. And I would like for the girls right within this program 
in Trinidad, and um, I'm going to see how we can get you here to Guyana, um, what funding it takes, because um, self-defense is critical to mm -hmm. actually learn, because it's not getting better. In, in yes. fact, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown have showed us that it is getting worse uh, yes, with yes. the level of violence being perpetrated against women and children. And yes. um, you being right there in Trinidad, I think it's a blessing to the Sophia Miriam Foundation, whereby uh, the girls within the foundation can become uh, part of part of your program. Um, uh, I don't know if you do a mentorship scheme or a coaching or self-defense classes, but I heard you reach out. And I think this is one of the greatest things to happen within this program uh, in the eighth week. Um, it's like uh, hitting a double whammy here today because yeah. uh, women need practical things in order yes. for them to survive uh, yes. an intended hit upon them. Yes. Yes. And I am a survivor and I survived a man who was trained in the Guyana Defense Force. And we all know that, and no offense to you, but someone trained in, in the defense forces is a trained killer. And to yes, escape yes. Um, to escape with your life, you've had to be clever uh, yes. to win the battle and the war. So I would yes. like for you to make the girls battle ready uh, yeah, for man. them to have similar skills like a soldier, because right. that will keep alert. Uh, yeah. to dangers around them. So I just want to thank you from the, the bottom of my heart uh, for thank being you. here today and the Sophia Miriam Foundation and team for yes. what they would have been doing uh, over the past eight weeks. And I think today culminates uh, what I would call uh, the real icing on the cake here with you coming on board to continue mm -hmm. to give practical skills and mm -hmm. help to very vulnerable women and girls who need you. So thank you very much. And your mama must be a very mm -hmm. special person. I'm not saying that your daddy isn't, but I know that yes. many mamas in the Caribbean would have raised yes. their sons. God bless you. Yeah. yeah, God bless you too. Thank you, Commission. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Right, thank you. Very, very valuable information here. So. Um, Moving on, we're going to play Mr. Kareem Daniel Rice's song, and um, I can see him on my screen already. A young man who's been um, advocating for mental health and for progress uh, amongst youths. So we're going to introduce him. He's going to tell us a bit about himself. Um, he's into the creative uh, field of songwriting and music production, etc. So we're going to play Mr. Kareem Daniel Rice's song going to give us some inspiration about leadership. Mastermind record. My purpose is calling me. Must have been a force in me for all to see the law of G. Evidence-based win race all across the seas. Of course they see they call on D to blood courses. General bill capacity like bosses. Just keep focus. Had to win from a goal the time so o'clock. Have to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them complain you like circus. We real and no bogus. Keep focus. Got to win for my goal. The time's so our clock. Got to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them complain you like circus. The devil who we don't trust. Keep focus. Got to win for my goal. The time's so our clock. Got to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them complain you like circus. We real and no bogus. Keep focus. Got to win for my goal. The time's so our clock. Got to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them complain you like sir, cause the devil do we go trust. One mind never bickering, one mouth, one song, ear to the ground and listening, listening. The times that we're living in, flowing like water serene in a pot that is top, glistening. I Crane, I view to the ground and write this scripture with purpose and passion, feeling like the victor. Karim Daniel Rice never forget the mister. Shedding light in the dark place. Fire blaze, hard steel, don't think it's a rat race. Everything happens timely, never ever break strike. These people blindly don't mind me, it's likely. Ice cold flow like snow sublimely. Heat rays melt ice to be slimy. Heads high to the sky, to the things grimy. Just keep focus, got to wait for my goal, the time's so o'clock. Got to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them complain, you like circus, we real and no bogus. Keep focus. 
Got to win from a goal, the time's so o'clock. Got to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them from play you like circles. The devil who we do plus. Keep focus. Got to win from a goal, the time's so o'clock. Got to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them from play you like circles. We feel no no focus. Keep focus. Got to win from a goal, the time's so o'clock. Got to put in your hard work and your effort. Never make them come play you like circus, the devil who we don't love. Stand out, be a champion. I desire to be greater, not to be a clown. Undisputed way the crown. Be extraordinary, be not the ordinary, be not no little minion. Happy be your strong out in a disagitian. To me born with a blessed skill and brilliance. And remember you are one in a million. Like the conquering lion, break every chain and overcome. Overcome them every obstacle and so be done. Now Lord be thy name, O Father, till thy kingdom come. Cause as you give us faith and hope and reason throughout the season, keep focus. Now Let's carry him down your eyes. Keep your heads high. Keep Find focus. something to live for. The time's so o'clock And live for work, and, and smile Play you like circles For life Keep focus No o'clock Hard work and no effort Play you like circles Cause the devil will be tortured Mastermind record Hard work and no effort Play you like circles The devil will be tortured Reaching out to every youth Keep focus Ever meek, ever humble, are ready. Mr. Rice, give us a few words of inspiration. Hello, good day. Can you guys hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Yes, we are. All right, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank God I have been preparing and the opportunity I arose. There's no such thing as luck, there's only preparation. Um, uh, setting the tone for my um, sharing, I'll just bless you guys with a short poem. All right. It's called Life's Too Sweet. And the first line is actually Life's Too Sweet. So let me go. Life's too sweet, today is good. Smile bright that you should let the worries Blow away, I know you could. Remember my second sentence, today is good. I really mean this, praying to God that you feel this in bright times, mostly more so in the darkness. Keep heads high, come let's chat this. Flames lit by the fire sparking. My name is Karim Daniel Rice. I'm a mental health advocate. Um, currently, um, I do a lot of motivation. I'm speaking as well. Um, Gender-based violence is something that is very important, important, extremely important. So currently I'm, I'm training, I'm a fellow in the uh, Federation of International Gender and Human Rights um, Organization, receiving um, training for um, gender-based violence and in order to help serve my communities. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago, Central Trinidad, to be exact. I'm a youth leader, uh, audio engineer, mental health advocate, and a parent of a young man, eight years, and a beautiful young girl who's going to be 10 this year. And a lot of what um, Mr. Nigel B. shared is very important, especially in terms of um, defending yourself. And this is the language I share, or the language I speak with my daughter about. Now, I'm 28 years of age, so I may look extremely young, it's just the way I view the world and how I carry about myself and that, that has me the way I appear to be, all right? Um, in terms of uh, the Sophia Mariam Foundation, I definitely believe it is of great advantageousness to be in the presence of persons who have actually walked the path that you may have dreamed about walking, um, to get advice, uh, to receive counsel, to avoid the pitfalls that may lay ahead. Somebody to hold your hand whilst you are along on your journey. And it, it, it this is a really, really awesome 
opportunity for all you young ladies to have that counsel from persons who know they have that lived experience mixed with the, the academics to make life easier, to take you away from the dark corners of life, similar to the Lion King, when uh, Mufasa said, everything that the light touches is yours. So you guys are so fortunate right now and lucky to be in the presence of persons who have been preparing for life, who can share that information and that insight of preparation that has already been done. So there's no need to recreate the wheel in order to achieve what you desire to achieve. All it needs is writing and putting it down into a plan and structure it and take the advice from the persons around you. Like I'm speaking from the heart right now. And it's like, how could I have followed such a great presentation by Mr. Nigel be here and so many things have been coming to mind and one of the things in particular would be how important it is to look into the history of persons that you may interact with. It doesn't necessarily mean um, intimate partners or boyfriends. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that some friends of the same sex can lead you astray as well. And that same awareness system is definitely needed to be able to discern who your true friends are. Because you can have such a bright future and your own friends, your own colleague could lead you astray. Introduce you to their brothers, introduce you to their cousins, and entrap you in situations that you didn't even have the foresight to understand because at the end of the day, they were thinking it, or me think that this is my friend, they wouldn't do this to me. So it goes, it, it's, it's, it's really, really, really um, in the grand scheme of things. It's not just about the male perspective. You need to be having that awareness for everyone you're coming to contact with. So I share on mental health. I've been living with a mental health condition for the past eight years, going on nine, all right? And unfortunately for me, I would have had to do a lot of the groundwork to understand my history in order to teach my kids because it is bigger than me. It is bigger than me, right? It is bigger than me. There isn't a lot of information about schizophrenia. They talk about anxiety. They talk about depression. But I needed to go deeper because if I don't go deeper, I may have been lost in situations that nobody in my family took the time to understand. Right? So I was going through something all alone at the age of 21. So coming out from that dark place and sharing with the people, I could definitely be in a hundred percent agreement with Mr. Nigel B in terms of the breathing, the dieting, the the martial arts. To, you know, it's very very important. Young ladies learn these things to protect yourself. It's not like, and this is a personal um, conversation I would have had with my daughter. See the world as a battlefield. Be a warrior, even though we were taught certain things in our society. It doesn't necessarily mean that, hey, women supposed to be at home alone doing things. In my mind, I see my daughter as a warrior. And if somebody attacks my daughter, she, by all means, has all rights to defend herself because it is something that I view as an important life skill. Because we are in the world, we're in a realm now of equality and equity. And women are not the weaker sex. They are just different. They are just different. And they have strengths that men don't possess. And it's vice versa. And these are things that I would have learned being a father at a young age of 19 without having these types of opportunities that you guys have right here before you to learn 
from elders. So it wouldn't make somebody mistake that persons like myself may have made or many other statistics in society who may not be in a position now to share with you guys and because of the opportunities that I may have capitalized on to dig myself out of a hole, all right? Uh, oh, somebody raised their hand there. They can go ahead and ask the question. No? Shan, did you want to say anything? Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Kareem. Yeah. So it, it's very important that this opportunity right before you guys learn to capitalize on it. Capitalize on it. You never know what could happen positively. There's something called um, Murphy's Law where anything negative could happen. It, but persons don't think that maybe if there's a Murphy's Law, there's something in reverse of Murphy's law, if you keep it absolutely optimistic, things will always positively work out in your favor. Yeah? See the world or see yourself as this potter and the world or your life as the, the clay on this spindle spinning. And in order to keep fashioning your life, yeah, as it is said in scripture, we are um, as the dirt, right? So we are the dirt. Sometimes I speak in parables and metaphorically. So we are like dirt, right? And a potter who is making a, a vase, amazing vase, he can't fashion that vase if it's not moist or hydrated. So keep hydrated and keep um, socializing with positive persons like the Sapphire Miriam Foundation and everyone attached to, to what is happening here for the greater good in your life, yeah? So um, I'm gonna close with this here now. Some of the experiences that I would have had would have been last year, um, I served as a global Good morning. Okay. So, Go ahead, yeah. Kareem. Last year, I served as a Global Peace Ambassador with the Global Peace Challenge 2020. That was a, a Global Peace Ambassador um, program out of Vermont. Um, this year I'm getting involved in the youth spaces in Trinidad and I share um, having had the experience of actually living with a mental health disorder and sharing at um, um, the New Life Ministries Drug Rehabilitation Center. So that's where how deep my experience goes and um, coming from a scouting background, um, having represented the country um, at a young age um, in Jamaica and the UK. And from that bright beginning to the dark times, I could see where I went wrong now. And I'm here to tell you today, you don't have to go wrong. You could have a part designed for you by receiving the mentorship and trusting in the experience of the person. So hopefully I'm not boring you guys here. So I'm going to close with this poem once more. Life too sweet. Today is good. Smile bright that you should. Let the worries blow away. I know you could. Remember my second sentence. Today is good. I really mean this. Praying to God that you feel this in bright times, mostly more so in the darkness. Keep heads high. Come, let's chat this. Flames lit by the fire sparking. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kareem. Very, very positive young man, Kareem. He's been pushing and, you know, just um, creating havoc in a good way, right? He's very, very positive and um, really glad for his words of wisdom. And as he said, you know, learn, learn. Take this as an opportunity, young ladies, to learn from the experiences of others, right? Don't have to go through the same mistakes. Really learn from, you know, from this opportunity. And um, there's a saying, opportunity uh, lost seldom regain. So, you know, make use of the of the opportunity. Very, very inspirational, Kareem. Um, uh, very remarkable. We have two really remarkable young men with us today, Nigel and Kareem. And I must say, you know, whenever you speak with them, you, you get that. Every time, I, if I call Nigel, 
he's always on top of the world. How are you on top of the world, you know? And it just gives you that, even if you're not on top of the world, you get that on top of the world feeling as well, you know? And it's the same with Kareem. He's always so pleasant and positive that they really give you such positive, positive vibes, you know? And in a society when, you know, there's a lot of negativity, you know, surrounding, um, you know, men and their behavior, it's really lovely to have positive young men amongst us to inspire us and give us that, um, that hope. So I want to thank them for um, supporting the foundation and for sharing, you know, the experiences um, with us. So great. Um, so if any of you young ladies would like to comment or ask a question, now is the time because we'll be moving into the National Pride segment where you'll have a chance to tell us a bit about your country. So any questions, uh, ladies, before we move forward? Ah, right. Commissioner Cole, go ahead. Good morning. Can you hear me again? Yes, we can. Hi, Kareem. Um, greetings. I would like to ask you if there were three important lessons that you would have learned in your ambassadorship program. Did I hear you right? Youth ambassador? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Global Peace Ambassador program. I'm listening. Right. Yeah. Yes. If if there were three skills that you would have learned that uh, you can take forward to actually tell us here, what would they be? Because I know that these programs are uh, at a level whereby it imparts lots of uh, life changing skills to our youth that really help them. Um, us here in Guyana, we have. Uh, child rights ambassadors this is with the rights of the child uh commission that i sit on and then there's also the caricom youth ambassadors um so i know the ambassadorship programs are really vital to enabling our youths to move forward in a really productive and motivating way i thank you to answer your question and thank you for um, asking um Three important skills I would have learned. Learn to pay attention to different time zones, right? Um, we live in the West Indies, so the time zone may be Atlantic Standard Time or Eastern Standard Time, right? And so my colleague in, in New Zealand would be carrying a different time zone from me, right? So in terms of managing my schedule, I have to be Paying close attention in order to make the meetings or have the conversation, right? As one. A second um, thing that I would have learned is do not be afraid to be wrong or do not be afraid to share your culture, right? Now, why I say this is there's a saying, and I may be paraphrasing this saying here um, a king isn't praise in this village or something more along that lines, right? Persons don't see the value, essentially, persons don't see the value of their culture. And foreigners or persons in a different part of the world, when they, they hear you speak in your native language or they, they hear things about your country, they're going to be like, wow, they gravitate into it. They want to hear more because it's like you to their air, to their mind. So you stand out. So they have value for you that you may not even know that is it possible to be loved that much three working or collaborating on projects internationally with persons from all the world from around the world it only adds value to the individual or it it, it boosts it can boost character it changes uh, it changes your network it changes um it could change your resume. It 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 um it opens opportunities. It creates friendship. Um, for instance, uh, you may want to take a vacation or travel the world after um the lockdown or whatnot. You there there that presents an opportunity there. So long as you are capable of sustaining the relationship, so it's like it happens virtually, 
we were meeting virtually, but the sky is the sky is the small. The universe is the limit in terms of potential opportunities to take your culture across over or overseas. So it those are the three things that I learned. Yeah. Hopefully um I was able to um, translate my thoughts um coherently. Yeah. Yes, Kareem, thanks very, very much. That was wonderful. And I think it really leads nicely into the other segment where we talk about national pride because sometimes we take, you know, things for granted and um, simple things like, uh, as you say, maybe our accent, uh, maybe foods we eat, etc., and um, details about our country and our, um, you know, culture. Other people really appreciate it. So I think this forum is a wonderful opportunity for the girls to exchange and share about their different um, territories and their cultures.